My last teacher, I liked him, and he he let us push buttons. Well, that's good. Should have taken him again. Okay. So let me see. Let me start fresh here. So I like. I think most of you guys are. You see how to use the chart. It's not that hard. It's just different than what we're used to. But I think most of you guys are able to read it. It just becomes a question of when do I look here, when do I look there? Little questions like that, which definitely are the weirder questions to answer. And one of the first things is label these appropriately. Why did I put zero in the middle? Because I have a standard normal curve, which is z-scores. And I want that. That kicks ass because the chart only understands and gives me areas below. So when I look at 1.51, what do you guys get? Yeah, that's what I got too. 1.9345. Done. It asks me for below. The chart tells me below. Done. This one, oh shit. I want this area. I can get this area directly. Right. So when I look at negative 0.96, what do you guys get? What do I get over here? Negative 0.96. Man, I hurt you guys today. You guys don't want to work with me at all. 1685, right? Yeah. So this is 1685, so what's my answer? 8315. I'd love it if like a couple of you guys were doing the whole nine, 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 ten thing. That'd be awesome, but I understand if you don't. That's fine. Got a little mechanical slave at your service. Um, so here again, zeros in the middle, negative three point two one, positive one point nine eight. So my answer should be kind of big. Do you see that? Way down, way up, in the middle should be kind of big. Now, now, let me say this. What does the z-score tell you again? More specific, because that's where I'm going to say miles. Number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point, right? I never subtract z-scores because a z-score tells me where I am. If I subtract z-scores, I am somewhere else. And then I won't answer the question. You look up areas and then subtract those. That makes physical sense. The area below this and the area below that, if I subtract them, I get the area that answers the question. That makes physical sense. Some of you guys are like, keep saying that. It's not going to come true. Damn it. It does make physical sense. So what do you get when you look up 1.98? Nine seven six one. I like it. And negative three point two one. Yeah, you get the low cost James Bond. So then, what do you do with those? Subtract <laughs> them. Nine seven. The gas. So there's almost ninety eight percent of a normal distribution between those two z squares. That's what that means. I like it. Okay, this one was nifty, but a lot of times it's just you're you're not <coughs> used to it yet. But the minute you saw it, it's like, well, of course that's what happens. Zero cuts it in half. So where do I draw the thing that represents 58% below? It's got to be a little above the mean, right? To have a little more area below it. Where do I put 0.58? It's, yeah, it goes up here because it's a percentage. So notice something, percentage equals probability equals area in this picture. So I'll, I'll say, look up the probability, or I'll say, look up the area, or I'll say, look up the percentage. I just said the same thing three times. You guys understand that? Maybe? Area? 
percentage probability. So like for example, this first one, I could say uh, there's 93.45% of the area below 1.51. Or there's a 93.45% chance that a z-score is below 1.51. Or 93.45% of all z-scores are below 1.51. All three of those mean the same thing. So I will use area, percentage, probability kind of interchangeably based on my mood at that immediate moment, I guess. I don't know what determines what comes out of the mouth. So that's how I draw this picture, 58 percentile, 58 percent below it. I've got to look up the z-score, so 0.58 is an area, and I know it's a positive z-score because I'm above zero. And the closer I get to 0.58, looks to be this guy. So 0.20. Why does it make sense it's positive? Because of what we just said, a little above zero. So it's not a bunch of shit to memorize, it's a bunch of stuff that checks and balances to make sure that it makes sense. This one always freaks people out. 5% above it. So zero has 50% above it. What only has 5% above it? Got to be way up here somewhere, right? I keep saying this, you know I've said this many, many times, but this is huge. The chart is built to only understand areas that are below. So 5% is above, 1% is below. 95%. So the person who has 5% of everybody else above him is the same person as the one that has 95% below him. See what I'm saying? So the question talks about 5%. I'm going to look up 0.95. I'm going to get the same freaking answer because it's the same freaking person, the same Z score. So what is 0.95? This is neat. I wanted to give you a problem that made this happen. See how 0.95 is right in the middle. So officially, we split the difference between 164 and 165, and it is 1645. This Z score is going to happen a lot. There will be certain z-scores that we see often because it just relates to very often used probabilities. But for right now, I'll just realize it is one six four five. Here, yeah, a z-score of one six four five. If I go one point six four five steps up from the mean, I have five percent above in a normal curve. So the person whose z-score on a test that's normally distributed is 1.645, what percentage scored higher than that person? 5%. Kick ass. I like it. See how everything kind of hopefully comes together? Okay. Somebody's like, yeah, you use a lot of words, Jeff. I know. So number two, we already talked about the difference here. I'm not going to put zero in the middle first. What's what, Primarily, what's in the middle? Yeah, the means, 31 plus 64. But when I took statistics, again, uphill both ways, I know, but we had to draw two separate pictures, and that's bullshit. The picture's not going to look different, so I just put z-scores underneath the parentheses to keep myself straight. Where does 27.2 go? Okay, so we're going to go Yeah, down this way. So underneath it, I'm going to write its z-score. i got to figure that out. So there's my data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If I remember correctly, I think you guys got negative 0.57. Is that right? So now the question just becomes exactly like this question. Now, what's the probability z is less than negative 0.57? I look up negative 0.57. Are you guys okay? Look up negative 0.57. How do you get? 2843? Yes, yes. Maybe? Yes. I concur, Jeff. Okay. You concur, I concur. And then the other two are exactly the same idea. Once you make z scores, they become just like these two. 
right? So more than 53 minutes. I know in the summertime, this, these numbers are not right. Because you guys, when you get to school, it's easy as hell to find parking space, right? And then when fall happens, <laughs> the first few weeks especially, <laughs> if your first class is at 10, you're screwed. Is this true? Yes. Have you lived this? Okay. Okay. Uh, so where does 53 go? Obviously, way the hell up here. You sound like this is and then I want more than that. So already I know the answer should be kind of a smaller percentage. Definitely less than 50%. What's my next step? What's my next step? Find a Z score, exactly. So, I, so very often at a problem, they'll give me raw scores, like minutes or uh, pig weight or uh, shoe longevity or whatever. They give me raw scores. I convert them into Z scores. And then I look up the area. That is the normal uh, progression of things in these kind of problems. What was nice about number one was I cut that guy out, right? I already made him Z scores. So it was just a one step. Number two is a two step problem. Take the X scores, make them Z scores, and then look them up. So if I change this into a Z score, what do you guys get? 2.73. And then if you look up 2.73, of course, you told yourself already the answer's over there. Anytime you look up a z-score in the chart, you immediately write down the area under what you just looked up. So if I look up 2.73, I get 9.968. Right? Thank you. So then what's on this side? Zero, zero, three, two. Make the last one set. Okay. And then this guy. 15.5 up to 29.5. I gotta make both of these become Z scores. Look up their areas and then subtract those. So it would be Z equals 29.5 minus 31.64 divided by the standard deviation. That's how I make a Z score out of that. And then whatever the hell, what do you guys get for that one? Negative 0.27. Okay. And just to show you real quick, <coughs> don't forget parentheses if you want to put it all in there at once. Right? Tell the calculator what the top is. I don't have to put it on the bottom because there's only one thing on the bottom. So negative 0.27, I like it. So that's negative 0.27. And then you put a 15.5 here. Instead, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you get then? Negative 2.07. I'm sorry, do it again. Negative 2.06? Ooh, dissension, I like it. Okay, so I get negative 2.07. Right? Because you got to round it. Totally. You don't just chop it. So I get negative 2.07. It's coincidence they both have a 2 and a 7. It's just kind of neat. So when I look up negative 0.27, I get too much area. I've got to subtract this area off. Negative 0.27, I get 3.936. And, neg and negative 2.07. 0192. So this problem is exactly like this problem, except this guy had one step at the beginning. 
nothing was z scores yet, so I had to make them z scores. And then all the work is the same. So when you subtract those, you get Yeah, are these wrong? I'm kind of like basing my one. So yeah, 0.3936, is that right? Yeah, you're right. right so. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> so you, as long as these are the right numbers, yeah. Okay, so what is wrong now, guys? So this is 0.3936. That's all this. This is 0.0192. How do I get the area in between? I subtract these two. Mm -hmm. When you subtract those two, you, you get this. So what's up? How are we doing? Right? So this is not an opinion. This is a fact. All right. So this one, 14th percentile, where is that at? Yeah, somewhere before zero for sure, right? So this is 0.14. Yeah, the closest you can get to 0.14. Let me catch up to you. Here we go. Yeah, this one's almost too nice. That's definitely as close as you get to 0.14 right there. And that's negative 1.08. Yeah. So the answer is 1.08 steps below the mean. So watch this. I don't think we've officially done this yet. But how do I solve that formula for x? I multiply by sigma. And then I add the mean. So let me write that a little different. x equals mu plus z sigma. And look how this, now watch. Hold on. Are you allowed to have notes on your formula sheet? Hell no. This is a note, though. If you read a formula in English, it's a note. How do I get to a data point? Start at the mean and go this many these. Mm -hmm. So watch how this is a note. What does z-score tell you? The number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. Oh, shit. Z-score is the number of these, number of standard deviations, from the mean to the data point. I love you guys. It's like you said a series of words, Jeff. but that's beautiful. So if you don't understand this, great. That's fine. This is another formula you can have on your sheet. This works. They're both the same formula. You guys really understand that? Algebra. When I do algebra shit to something, I'm not changing it. I'm just rearranging it. When is this good? If I know these three things. When is this good? If I know these three things. What do I know? I know the mean. I know the standard deviation. And now I know Z score. And I'm trying to figure out what the time is. That's the raw score. That's the data value, right? So now if I just plug stuff in, X equals, where'd you go? There you go, 31.64 minus 1.08, right? Z score is negative, times 7.81. Would you say the 14th percentile is a good place to be? For this problem? This problem, yes, because you want less time spent looking for a parking spot, right? Did that have to do with this problem? No, I don't care. <laughs> you guys, what do you guys get when you do this? 23.2? No? I don't know. 2 1? So if it took somebody
they have that much time, they are in the 14th percentile. 14% of people took less, that's pretty good. Basically, just today we finished up section six two. We are done with the first chap six chapters. Insane. Did you already pass out the practice test? Do it looks like no. Oh, or whatever. Or what is oh, on the back of that that one right there. Our problems we didn't do yet, oh, but I'm going to bring the answer key for that tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. So you can try that on your own if you want to. This first piece, this will be on the, the quiz. quiz. This last piece won't, because that's from chapter 5.